The next thing I'm going to go over in this video are infrared or IR sensors. IR sensors are usually used for some sort of motion detection. And in all of them, they have what's called an IR receiver. And this is a device that is able to detect IR radiation. And the IR radiation is either detected from the envi environment or it's detected from um, an emitter that's also on the device. So shown here is an IR LED. It's like a, a normal light emitting LED, but it emits IR radiation. So shown here is a pa what's called a passive IR sensor. This one just has the receiver element. So this one is specifically for detecting IR radiation that's being emitted from the environment. It's good at detecting changes in, in IR radiation from the environment. So an example would be a person or some living thing walking by a scene um, which emits more IR radiation than surroundings. The other type of sensor is called an active IR sensor and that uh, a module is shown right here. So this is a board that's all been constructed. Um, you can also build active IR sensors using these, these types of components, the IR, LED, the IR LEDs and receivers, but it will take you more time. With that type of device, you're going to be able to get an analog readout. These built modules, this one in particular, has only a digital output. So the IR radiation is emitted from the LED, and if there's an object in the way, that IR radiation is blocked and more IR or reflected and more IR radiation is detected by this receiver. So there's an, um, it, it detects some object in the way. You could change the sensitivity of this IR sensor by adjusting uh, the trim pot on the sensor, which is right here. There are also analog output active IR sensors that are available, but they're more expensive than these digital output ones. The last type of IR sensor I have here is something called a, a gesture sensor. This is a more sophisticated board. And it's able to detect if you run your hand over the uh, over the over the module to the left or to the right, and it also provides uh, distance information as you move your hand closer or farther away. Now, there are also active other active IR sensors that are going to give you dim distance information, or if you build your own, you can also get distance inf information from the sensor. In those cases, is going to be an analog output with a digital output from the IR sensors, you won't be able to detect distance. So for this video, I'm just going to hook up this digital active IR sensor, and I'm going to provide links for how to use these gesture sensors and also active IR sensors as well. All right, now I'm going to hook up this digital IR sensor here. I've got a breadboard, the Arduino, Again, we connect the breadboard to ground and the five volts here. And then on the IR sensor, there's a ground, a five volt, and an out pin. So we just plug that into the out, uh, the, the board, and it's pretty simple, just connect the 5 volts to the 5 volt pin, the ground to the ground pin, and uh, the out pin to, let's just say, pin number 2, right here. Alright, now I'm going to show some of the code and how to adjust the trim pot to get uh, different, uh, to, to read the IR sensor. Here's the schematic for the circuit that I just put together. The output of the sensor is going to pin 3 here. And here's the code for reading in that, that output from the sensor. It's very similar to the switch code I showed a few minutes ago in this video. We declare a constant for the pin that we're connecting the output of the IR sensor to. We declare a variable for the state of the sensor. In this case, one means that the object that, that there is no object in front of the sensor. And if it turns to zero, it means that some object is, is reflecting IR, IR radiation back onto the sensor. In the setup function, we have uh, 
the declaration of the pin mode as an input. And we set up the serial monitor here with this line of code. And then in the loop function, we read in the IR pin and display it with the serial.println command. And that's what you're seeing right here. There's no object in the way, so the digital output from the sensor is 1. And if I move my hand in front of the sensor, you see it switched to 0. If I move away, it switches back to 1 and back to 0 when my hand is, it gets close enough to the sensor. Now if I move my hand too far away from the sensor, you see it switched to 1 right there. A clear advantage of the IR sensor over the, the push button and the switch is that I don't have to make any physical contact with the switch. And that could be pretty nice depending on what, what kind of project you're doing. However, they can be noisy and uh, the ambient light conditions can affect the reading of the sensor. And I have more details of the advantages and disadvantages of these IR sensors in the Instructable. A link is in the description. On the IR sensor, as I mentioned before, is this trim pot for adjusting the sensitivity. If I turn the, uh, this trim pot too far, you see it turns to, oh, I unplugged it there. There we go. So if I turn the trim, uh, trim pot too far, it turns to zero, even though there's no object that's actually getting in front of the sensor. So I've adjusted this, this, this threshold too, too far it's, um, so that it can't actually detect objects. And likewise, if I turn it, the trim pot too far in the other direction, we'll just read one. Um, and even if I put my hand in front of the sensor, it won't, it won't switch. So now I've got this, uh, the sensitivity too far on the other extreme. Um, so if you're having some issue with these digital IR sensors, that's the first place to turn is just mess with that trim pot and make sure that it's right in the middle or, or that it's within these two extremes of, uh, of the thresholding. See, right now it's, it's, it's right between um, being too sensitive, um, so it's, you know, it's really noisy and it's flicking back and forth between 1 and 0. So if I turn it just a little bit more, and now it's reading 1, there's no object that's in the way, and if I move my hand again, you see it switched to 0. I wanted to show an example of using lots of IR sensors in an Arduino project. Shown here is the geodesic dome that I constructed about a year ago and it consists of 120 IR sensors and the IR sensors are positioned right above each triangle so when a person places their hand in front of the IR sensor the IR radiation is reflected off the hand directed back to the sensor and you can trigger either a light to go off underneath the triangle or a MIDI signal can be produced. But there are some issues with using this many RIR sensors. First off, they need to be calibrated, so it's, it takes a lot of time adjusting the trim pot for each one of these IR sensors. You also have to multiplex if you're going to use an, uh, an Arduino Uno. I have 532 channel muxes for using this many IR sensors on the dome. I'm now going to turn on the the dome and show you another issue that I have. That is that the IR sensors sensitivity or the IR sensors response changes depending on the amount depending on the ambient light in the room. The program I have uploaded onto the dome now is written so that when a hand goes in front of one of the IR sensors, one of the triangles cycles through three colors. The IR sensors are tuned so they're only sensitive to one triangle on the dome. So when I move my hand in front of this IR sensor here, the IR radiation that's being emitted from the IR sensor is reflected off the hand and detected by the sensor. And I can cycle through these colors and it stops when I move my hand away. So the program is designed so that you can color the dome any way you feel like with these three colors. And it works fine now. 
in these light conditions, there's no overhead lights that are on and you see no IR sensors going off. However, when I flick the lights on, you'll see that one of the sensors starts going off here. And the reason for that is because the ambient light is emitting some, I, some IR radiation that is distorting the measurement being made with the IR sensor. So it thinks that there's an object there when there really isn't. And I think there's another IR sensor that's going off on the other end. So this can be an issue for using these IR sensors because you're either going to have to tune the IR sensors for whatever light condition that you're moving your device to, or you just have to tell people that this device just works when all the lights are off. And to highlight this issue, I'm going to just add one more light. I've got one over here, and sh I'm going to shine it on the dome, and you're, you'll see some of these IR sensors going off here and see how far the light source is from the dome. It's, these sensors aren't going off because the object is close. It's just that this light source is, again, emitting some IR, rate, IR radiation that is uh, distorting the measurements being made with the IR sensors. So this is something to keep in mind when deciding whether or not you want to use these digital IR sensors for a device that you're making.